Welcome. Let's go to our uh, guest caller. Let's see if we can get him on the line. Hello. Hello. Who do we got on the phone? Well, who do we have on the phone? <laughs> we got the Wise Guy Show. Who do we got on the phone? <laughs> oh, okay. I see. You guys are a couple of wise guys. <laughs> Clint Howard, come oh. on. <laughs> Welcome to the Wise Guy Show. Well, thank you. It's, it's, listen, I don't think I've ever been on Wise Guy Show. <laughs> well... We're so happy to have you, and uh, I got to tell you, it, we were so looking forward to this interview. And um, uh, I got to let's say, let's just, if uh, we can, we can get started. Um, wh how's how's everything with Clint Howard these days? Everything is swimmingly well. I'm I'm really enjoying life. So, you know, live here in Los Angeles with my wife Kat and and our daughter Rafa, and we we did have a really nasty heat spell. And at my age, for the first time, I really noticed it really super hot weather really knocked me on my don't. <laughs> oh, well. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Freddie the Fireman. I'm here with Jumpin' Gennaro. How you doing, Clint? Italian singing I'm sensation Biagio. Hi, Clint. And Joey Cat. Hiya, Clint. Wait, wait, wait. Joey what? Cat. Joey Cat. Oh, Joey Cat, like my wife. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was only on with a C. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say that, but I said let's let's wait till we announce all the guys, and you're gonna find out for yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's cool. Well, listen, it, it's a pleasure to be on. Oh, uh, it's an, it. such an honor, such an honor. Um, if you know, uh, I just wanted to ask you, how, how did it all get started uh, for you uh, in in uh, in acting? Was there any inspirational figures that that you wanted to portray or you looked up to? Seriously, it was a baby bottle. Oh, it started when I was two years old. Wow, wow. wow. I, I have no memories, guys, of when I got started. Oh, uh, wow. I, you know, and 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 it, just in a nutshell, you know, my, my brother Ron was working on the Annie Griffith show and my parents would take me down there sometimes out of necessity to the set. And, and, uh, you know, I obviously had an aptitude for being in front of people. I had an aptitude for, for, you know, kind of not being shy around the camera. And now I don't have any memories of this. This is all stuff I was told. Um, uh, and I've always just really enjoyed it. Oh, nice. That's fantastic. Now, now as, you, as you got older, did you prefer, well, well, even now, do you prefer TV or film? Did you like either or, or was there a sp uh, I, I really, I, I truthfully really enjoy film. Uh, or, you know, I don't know, it's, it's getting harder and harder to really differentiate what's film. But, you know, television is, is where they do it real fast. Uh, it's repetitious. It's it's many times you're playing sort of the same character in the same beat, um, and just to get into the weeds a little bit about about the business is that is that in television when they when they like you to do something they or you know they and and you do it well they say oh that's great Clint do that again and that just doesn't happen on film on film you capture a moment. You, you do something that's spontaneous and fresh, and, uh, and, and you move on. In television, it's just sort of recapturing moment after moment after moment. Wow. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's, uh, this jump in Janeiro, in a sense, it's, it's uh, a lot more uh, work and energy, as you're saying, and, uh, and, and trying to, to, to keep up with uh, you know, something grand, it sounds like as opposed to just having an inspirational moment and working on a, a particular uh, production, a film that, you know, you're working with a great actor uh, or a director, and then, you know, something extraordinary happens. You know, not to just kiss your butt, but that was really an astute comment. And, and I'll tell you who did that really well. Henry Winkler, playing yeah. the Fonz. Yeah, yeah, we met Henry Winkler. Yeah. H Henry is a jewel yeah he's a freaking american jewel and he was able to keep that fonzie character fresh when all the networks were doing was saying oh that was great do it again that was great do it again well henry had the discipline and the acting chops to be able to repeat what he was doing and yet keep it fresh for the audience 
So it is. It is. It's. It's. I think it takes a lot more discipline to be a high quality television actor than it does to be, you know, kind of like you were saying, a spontaneous, have the moment, cut, print, check the gate, that's beautiful, and move on to the next moment. Well, you're talking about Henry Winkler. I know in in the Happy Days, uh, James Dean was certainly an inspiration. And every time that he, you know, I didn't know when I was younger who that guy was until I, you know, obviously studied acting and got into great films and then I, of course i knew who james dean was it must have been truly an inspiration for him and i think he probably fed off that that character of uh, you know james dean uh in his in his fonzie act kind of character i should say yeah listen i'll tell you what though i'll tell you what henry has innate comedy timing and happy days was a comedy you know, outside of the first season or two was done in front of a live audience. Wow. And Henry just had an ability to, in a comedic level, connect with a, a, that crowd. You know, so listen, as just as far as the, the difference between being a film actor and being a, a television actor, um, you know, I think the discipline, I think the d discipline is a key word there. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Clint, Clint, I want to ask you, now, obviously, uh, you were in so many things, um, but your mom, your dad, your, obviously your brother, you, you uh, growing up in, in, in a whole family of actors, how, how was it living, you know, um, at home? Did, did it uh, interfere with the daily life at all? Well, not at all. To the, to the contrary. I, listen, it was normal to us. Right. It was normal. It was normal to myself. I listen. I had a I had an older brother to look up to. Um, I had my parents to look up to. I saw them do it. It seemed very natural to me. So, you know, I, I just thought I was I was a very fortunate man. I still am very fortunate, but I was fortunate to be in the position I was when I was a little kid because I got to be around some really high quality people. And, and my brother was a wonderful example of somebody that navigated the business. And let me take this moment to pitch my book. Oh, yes, oh, yes absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You know, Ron and I wrote a book called The Boys, a memoir of, of uh, Hollywood and family. And, and so, um, hold on one second. Yeah, so anyway, we, we, uh, we wrote this book. It's going to be coming out in paperback. In, within the next week, it's a HarperCollins book, and it chronicles our lives as child actors. And it, it more than just chronicles, it really shares what our feelings were and what we were thinking when we were experiencing what we were experiencing, which is there's no denying, you know, what my brother and I did as little junior actors and then moving on into adulthood and being in a position where we can have a, a fulfilling career in a crazy business like the entertainment business. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of the book. Ron's real proud of it. It was a New York times bestseller for a month. Nice. Um, so, you know, yeah, that was so, so for people that want to take a deeper dive into like what it was like being a child, what it was like, what that what was I thinking as a child actor, I would definitely, I would definitely take a look at the book and also to the audio book. It might cost a few extra bucks, but it's Ron speaks his words and I speak my words and it, it's, it's, we tell, we tell the book and it's a pretty, what I've been told, it's a pretty interesting read. And That's awesome. not, what's That's the awesome. title of the book? The boys, the boys, the boys. The boys. The boys. It's the boys. I'm going to find it. And then uh, we're, we're going to, I'm going to put it up on the screen so everybody could see it as well. And uh, definitely, uh, we're, we're, you, you just sold it to us, so we're, we're all getting a book. So. <laughs> Clint, but, can I ask a quick question? This is Biagio. Um, growing up, would, did you do any classes, or are you just thrown into this? I know you said you were natural at it, just like your brother. Because I don't know how many movies you've been in, but the funny thing is I was watching TV last night, and I didn't realize you were in that, that thing you do. Yeah, I played the I played the uh, uh, jazz DJ. Yeah, <laughs> I was surprised to see you in that. I saw you in a lot of other movies, and I said, "Wow, how many movies have you actually been in?" Uh, you know, I I can take a guess. It's hundreds. <laughs> wow. Well, between it uh, also depends. It also depends what you call a movie. I mean, if you count everything I've ever done, it's like three hundred and something things. 
Yeah, he's uh, but wow. some of that. Some of that is you know te- multiple television. I did fifty some on episodes of the television series Gentle Ben. Yeah, um, I remember Gentle Ben. But, yeah, but my my IMDb list is is there's no denying it's pretty amazing. It is. It um, is. It's bigger than um. Guys, it's, guys, <laughs> guys, guys. Some of it is just mathematics. Yeah. I've been a professional actor for over sixty years, and if you just keep banging out job after job. You know, eventually you're going to hit some pretty rarefied numbers. Yeah. You know, this is jumping, Gennaro. I'm sure it's going to be in the book, and I'm sure uh, you probably uh, you know, told this in this in the story, in your journey. Was there a, a particular time being, you know, in a family that's constantly, you know, working on different projects, and whether it be film or TV, or was there a period of time? You know, other than maybe Christmas and Thanksgiving, where you made a, a family agreement that you know you would be, you would, you would not be doing anything, you know, or working and just you know being together and spending uh, quality time together without you know anybody working, you know, in the industry. Well, not as a family, no, no. We we never we never had a big team meeting and said we're going to not work for six months. Right. Um, that just wasn't in our DNA. My dad was a lifer. My dad, Rance Howard, was a lifer character actor, and he loved to work. And, and you know, and so no, there. Were, you, listen, our best days were when we were working. Now, I'll, let me. I'll tell you this: when I hit my high school years, and I played on the high school baseball team, I played three years of, of baseball, two years on the varsity. Um, I turned jobs down because I didn't want to mess with, you know, my high school season. Um, wow, awesome. I, you know, so, so, you know, listen, I got a little choosy. I got a little choosy in that period of time. What position? You know, when I was 15, 16, 17 years old. What position did you play? I pitched. Oh, oh, oh you pitcher. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay. I was a little I was a little right handed that could throw a pretty good curve for strikes. Well, they need they need you. They you know, if you if you're that good, that's impressive. You know, you, yeah, you, and also too, I was uh, listen, I don't think it's a brain surgeon. It takes a brain surgeon to figure this out, but you know, I looked down lineups and, and I looked at guys and I realized there was only one or two guys on each team that could really beat me. When I threw my curveball, if I kept throwing Uncle Charlie, these are high school kids for Christ's sakes. They couldn't hit a good Uncle Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So then, and then if I saw somebody that scared me, here's a really good tip: I threw inside changeups because they were just gonna they were gonna pound it foul, pound it foul, pound it foul. I didn't want to throw anything to a good hitter out over the plate because they were gonna might hit it back up the box. <laughs> <laughs> That's so anyway, oh, also to answer the previous question, no, never had it, never gone to an acting workshop. Wow. Me, my dad, my dad was the ultimate act, you know, child actor whisperer. And in the fundamentals of acting, they're all very, very simple. You listen, you develop, you, you develop an idea of where your character was, what he's doing in that scene and where he wants to go. You can, you can teach that to a little child. You know, and they can absorb it. And if the character, if a character has a reason why they're doing something, because everybody's got a motive, then you're well on your way to developing a character and then really listen. Really, well, yeah. really listen. You had that's uh, hard. Yeah. Jump in hey. again. I was just to say, you, you had this extraordinary world of, of talent, you know, in in uh, as actors and directors and people in production that you know gave you a little bit of information you know every, every you got a you got a little bit from everybody and you know what's better than that you know that's 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 the greatest resource clint i want to ask yeah. you on your work um i looked you up and uh, obviously I, I i knew a lot of the stuff you did but on your uh, wikipedia or uh, w- w- it, it said that how you listed as an actor and a singer how, how, what sing is that? Was that a misprint? I never saw you sing. No. Well, I'll tell you what. Originally, Wikipedia said I was an avid chinchilla breeder. 
right, I just no, I just wanted to long make long sure long. because uh, I got Biagio over here who performs all the time. I was like, hey, if we could get you a gig, we'll oh, get that you would in be there. great. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I was in I was in a new wave punk band in the early '80s oh. called the Kempsters, and it was me and my best friend at the time, Scott Green. We put together a band, and we weren't really punk. We were sort of new wave. New wave. We were. We were. We were. It was kind of like if the B-52s had Lou Reed as the point man. Wow. Uh-huh. Lou, Lou, Reed, Lou Reed and David Bowie were my two absolute idols growing up. And, and so I, um, um, that, that's the way I sang. I didn't really sing. It was a crap shoot that I was going to hit a note. <laughs> but I would sort of rant and ramble through tunes and it's if you go to if you go to youtube and look up clint howard and the kempsters oh we gotta wow. yeah. 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 check that out there are a couple of music videos that got cut together and we they were just somebody in the last 10 years has edited them together from uh, from some video uh footage we had but we toured around southern california and played for a few years so um wow and we had a blast we had a blast and finally it was you know pretty apparent to me that i had a profi- i had a profession that i was pretty good at Kimsters. And the music business was going to be really hard if you were rhythm challenged and tone deaf <laughs> <laughs> well, well obviously clint um you played in a lot of uh famous movies uh some uh, like uh, name is apollo 13 the water boy uh you, you had a lot of play uh, a lot of roles in a lot of different movies but two that come to my mind and then i'll let the rest of the guys go because I, um, I i don't want to keep you too much longer because uh this is a great interview and and i'm so ha- i'm not so honored to uh to to uh, say but um i gotta say uh backdraft uh and uh the one uh, you actually had an odd couple uh, episode dedicated to just your character and i mean i was as a being a huge fan of the odd couple um we were watching it not too long ago and i was telling annette that's that's clint and she's like oh that's clint <laughs> and i mean to to for me uh, growing up uh, you being a child actor and then i seen you uh, obviously grow into the adult actor that you are uh, i gotta say uh, what was it like working with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman? And one, two question, uh, two questions. And what was, what was, uh, did you uh, get the experience of a real firefighter while working for Backdraft? Well, okay. The first, the first one was yes. I was, I think, by the time I did the Odd Couple, I was twelve years old. So I had good solid memories of, of that I can remember of working on the show. Uh, there was a wonderful director, a guy named Bruce Bilson who was the director. Um, and of course I didn't really realize this till later, but Gary Marshall yeah. who ended mm-hmm. up doing happy days later. Gary Marshall was a guy who was really responsible for running, um, the, the, uh, the odd couple. And, you know, it, there was, it was a great experience. And Jack Klugman was, was a great man. Jack Klugman and my dad were friends. Oh. Jack Klugman, Jack Klugman and my dad worked together on Broadway in a, a play called Mr. Roberts oh. back in the very early fifties. And my dad, my dad and Jack had remained friends for, for, you know, uh, a long time until Jack passed. Um, so, but no, it was a great experience. I, I loved, I loved working on it. It was fun to do. The character was right in my wheelhouse. Um, and, and so it was easy. It yeah. was, it was, you know, normally sitcoms can be kind of nerve wracking. To work on a sitcom because you're sort of expected to get laughs when nobody's laughing. It's just it's a weird dynamic. I'm not a big fan of this of the of the uh, sitcom sort of life. Yeah, I very magnificent. Sitcoms. I feel like I'm pretty good at it, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. Right. But that was a great that working on the Odd Couple was a great experience, yeah. and um, uh, and on something that you know every once in a while I will see it on television. Uh, and I'll, it was pretty funny yeah. because the Oscar became my big brother. Felix was signed in the beginning of the episode. Felix is supposed to be my big brother, and of course, who wants to be? Who wants to be? You know, have Felix be your big brother? Yeah. When Oscar <laughs> Madison, he let you go play on the ball. roof. <laughs> I remember you. Where, where's Randy? I let him go on the roof. Oh. You let him on the roof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
He taught me how to spit. Oh, man. <laughs> that was great. And, and what, what about backdraft? Well, backdraft, I'll tell you, backdraft is one of the highlights of my, of my acting career because my scene, I had one good, one really good scene. And it, it was with um, uh, Robert De Niro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to, I got to, I got to have a full on, full contact sequence with with Bob De Niro, and he was every bit the the actor that I imagined he was. Ron gave me a pretty good scouting report, so I knew going in sort of what his process was, and it was just it sent the hair on the back of my neck. Mm. Uh, he was that good. I, I do have one. I'm going to tell on myself here a little bit. I've got one sort of embarrassing foot in the mouth story. Huh. We do, do I have a couple of minutes? Yeah, oh, no, yeah. you got yeah. Okay. okay. Working, first of all, I'm nervous as I'll get out, you know, and, and that I'm going to be working with Bob De Niro. He'd already been, of course, in Godfather and, and, and Raging Bull. And my goodness, what a champion friggin' actor he is. Uh, and things are going really good. It started slow, and that's one thing, a scouting report that Ron told me. He goes, it takes him a while to get going. We do many takes, many takes, and but after about six or seven or eight takes, the thing started really getting good. Anyway, there was a break in the filming. And, you know, on a film set, there's a person called the craft service person. You know, and they're the people that, that make treats and, and make snacks for the crew. They have a table where people can go and graze at the craft service table. And then sometimes they make snacks and then actually bring them to the set. And and I was feeling very confident by this point because things were going good and, 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 and Bob seemed to like what I was, my participation in the thing and we were talking and it was great. And then, okay, the lady is coming around with the snacks and it's, it's, Big, big plates of broccoli pizza. Now, I'm standing next to Ron, and I, I, I see the lady says, would you like some broccoli pizza? And I look at the pizza, and I look at Ron, and I go, who the F would order broccoli pizza? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was standing about, oh, three yards downwind from Bob. He ordered it. Wow. And and Ron whispered in my ear, Bob, that was Bob's. <laughs> it, it must have been broccoli Rob. I mean. <laughs> Bob's, Bob, Bob, this is Bob's favorite snack. Bob's favorite snack. <laughs> and I said it I said it like this, guys. I said, Who the F would order broccoli? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so that is great. So there tell, it is. You know, I I put my I put my foot in my mouth Rob? a few times in my life. And that was that definitely is that that's on one hand uh, put in the mouth. Joey Joey Clap. Clint, this is Joey Catalano, Joey Cat, with the C. <laughs> Watched it as a kid, Gentle Ben, every Sunday night, I think it was on, right? Sunday nights? Uh, yes, Sunday yeah. night at 7 o'clock. That's right. What was, what, what was your favorite project that you can remember? That oh, you ever, that you ever did? Gibson. We did an episode, of, we did a baseball episode, and Bob Gibson was the guest star of the show. Oh, wow. I got to play catch with Bob Gibson. Wow. Okay, so you're a, you're a, a baseball bad, guy, that means, right? Actor. He had a funny voice. He had a really funny, high pitched voice, but he was actually not a bad actor, <laughs> and, and and so that was pleasant. I, I did. A, I also did an episode with Bart Starr. Oh wow! And, and, wow! And so God you, bless him. Bart, you're a sports guy. You like sports? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love sports. Okay. But Bart was, you know, he uh, listen. Uh, Bart was a little stiff. It's a little stiff. But Bob Bob Gibson was great. And listen, I still, I've got an autographed baseball from Bob Gibson. Uh, he's a I've got a he was a beast. I've, yeah. got, I've got photos in my office of me talking with Bob Gibson. I mean, <sighs> listen, he had a one point one two ERA the year before. Uh, he was a beast. So he threw gas like one nobody's of the best. business. He was, yeah. one of and the he was best, a nice yeah. dude, and he wasn't that big. He was only about six foot tall. No. You know. So, so anyway, what's your... that was that, that's an easy one to answer. Um, the easy one to answer is is Bob Gibson okay. in the Gentleman episode. Nice. What's your favorite team? I mean, now we're talking baseball. 
Well, okay, my favorite team is I'm a Pittsburgh Pirates fan. We're a Pirates Whoa, fan. Oh, they're playing the Yankees tonight, too. Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't expect to raise the Jolly Rogers. <laughs> In fact, that's the, I, listen, that's the one thing about the Pirates. You know, we only have to worry about raising the Jolly Roger once or twice a week. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, it, it's, uh, listen, when, growing up, growing up, I, I, became a fan of the Baltimore Orioles because while I was working on gentle Ben, a, a I, the, the Orioles would do spring training down in Miami. And, and I was a big baseball fan by the time I was eight years old. And I had my dad take me to the international hotel, which is where the Orioles were staying during spring training. They didn't have a, a facility. They just stayed at the hotel. And I went down there for breakfast and I met Boog pal. Oh, and, and when Boog Powell shook my hand, that made me an Oriole fan. Yeah, he's and, another big you know, guy. They had a pretty, they've had a pretty good run this year. I don't really expect too much. I'm not sure. That, are they even going to make the playoffs? Yeah, they, they, they're they still fighting. Yeah. Baltimore's still fighting. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, no, guys, I'm a huge sports guy. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, sports. And that was the one thing that growing up, and this is also in the book, The Boys, a memoir of Hollywood and family. Um, that, that Ron and I really had sports as an outlet for, you know, the, the, what we were doing as what we were doing as kids. Yeah, it was a little abnormal. Yeah, and, well, and mom and dad, mom and dad really knew that it was important for us to be as normal as possible. So you know, we played. I played since the second grade. I was in organized sports teams. Um, and then, of course, in, in when I was 10, 11, 12 years old, we had uh, a basketball team in the Burbank Park and Recreations Department, and Ron was the coach. Ron was five years older, is five years older than wow. So, you know, Ron was the coach. He was a 17, 18-year-old kid coaching, and I was, you know, 12, 13, playing on the boat. On, on the, we called ourselves the Howard's Hurricanes. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Well, listen, uh, we we haven't done a not so. We got to do at least one. That's how we celebrate, uh, you know, a, a very euphoric moment. This has been a, a great, great moment uh, with you spending time, and thank you for sharing so much, uh, Jumping Janeiro. So, on the count of three, we're gonna say uh, a not so for you. On the count of three, everybody, uno, due, three, not so. <laughs> and on another note. When you're in the New York... Now he's saying, what the fuck does Atzo mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck puts right Broadway right on pizza? What the fuck that's is great, Atzo? That's a great one. And it's probably, Joe, as Joey Katz said, it was probably broccoli rabe. It wasn't regular broccoli. Yeah, what but, did the broccoli look like on that pizza? You remember? <laughs> was it like it long and... Sh- it wasn't broccolini. It was just the old-fashioned garden <laughs> variety. Make you want to puke. Broccoli? Oh. 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 Uh, anyway, when you are in the area, we welcome you to uh, break bread with us, whether it's you coming in or your whole family, at Blue Eyes in Hoboken in Sinatra Park, and we'll, we'll take you to see Sinatra's statue right next to Right next it's to a, the, it's right to on the, the waterfront. It's a family's restaurant, my Jump of Gennaro's family's restaurant. We go there uh, for all our our uh, guests and family. When every time we meet somewhere, and it's it's a beautiful. Well, rest- I would be honored. I would be honored, and and yes, please let's let, let's see if we can make that happen at some point. I just got to know. Standing next to the Sinatra uh, statue. Is there a is there a statue of a horse yeah. head? A oh, horse head. <laughs> <laughs> you no, ma- but, but you we'll ma- put one there if we you want. You, ma- you imagine this? It took a hundred his hundred and sixth birthday before they finally gave him some some recognition in the city of Hoboken. It's a, it is beautifully done by a wonderful artist sculptor. And uh, it's right near the restaurant, and it's the most and, beautiful view of New York. And and it's a brick oven pizza, and we promise, promise no, no broccoli. broccoli. I was just going to say it. <laughs> no we broccoli. promise no broccoli on Wood the pizza. Wood fire, right. brick oven, Neapolitan <laughs> cuisine, but you will be breaking bread with one of the best people around here on the Wise Guy Show family. All right? Bravo. Yeah, I appreciate it. And Ronnie's invited, too. <laughs> yeah, and he, okay. You invite your whole family. Your whole family's invited. Don't, don't 
call him Ronnie. There's only one person in the world that can call him Ronnie, and that's his wife. Oh, oh shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, tell him there's number two now. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres, hasta. <laughs> Clint, thank you so much. We really, we, yeah. we can't, I can't tell you how honored we were for this interview. And uh, we really hope to see you in uh, uh, Hoboken. And uh, you, you have Annette's information. Please, uh, when you're in the New York City area, even the New York, New Jersey area, uh, contact us and we'll set it up. And uh, we'll f whatever time you want uh, to do it, we're there. Oh, I'm down. We'll be in touch, guys. Thanks, Thanks so man. much. Take Thank care. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Man. Thank you. What a great interview. Awesome. What a great interview. Clint <laughs> Howard was a legend in uh, in film and he is he still yeah no no but but i i, I gotta say he he started like in the 60s early mid -60s. yeah he did yeah. And, he, and he and he's still two years old day. he was too yeah. I, i'm I, I, i'm it was an honor to have interviewed him i'm hoping we can get to queen margarita and or uh even blue eyes that we're like we we're really trying to get him yeah. and he wanted to see the statue but uh it, it is uh, i gotta thank um clint and and his wife for making this all happen and uh, I, I, from the bottom of my heart, I can't tell you how I'm looking forward to meeting him in person, especially at Blue Eyes, Mike. That would yeah, be an amazing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, don't, I, think, uh, I think it'll be. Listen, when we invite them, it's not just because it's a special you know, a place, and, uh, but we, it's, we a it's a memory. It's a memory. It's a memory. No broccoli. No broccoli. No broccoli. Hold on. <laughs> No, broccoli, hey, not broccoli. Well, maybe good. you order a broccoli, just a teaser, <laughs> and and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll throw it right out. Uh, See, I'm going to tell you something. Order this. 